An Hermes lawsuit? Get a life. I can say that because I got one simply by handing over my Amex. I know this video has been done to death, but I'm not going to make any disclaimers for adding to the conversation. I hope you enjoy it and I'm keen to hear your point of view in the comments section down below. It's no secret that I've never been one for the Hermes journey, but now more than ever I'm seeing the ugly side of how toxic the journey can be. The journey pits customers against customers, essays against essays, and the rules are unwritten and subject to change without notice. People have followed the rules in their country. Some people here on YouTube in Australia, Singapore, Canada, the UK and Europe and gotten their dreams fulfilled. And there are people who haven't with no explanation, no justification, the same payment method, money. Is your money worth less when you buy all of the things that you love but aren't offered the bag? Well, according to your Hermes essay, yeah, it might be. Is your money worth less because of what you wear when you shop? Well, it might be. Is your money worth less because you don't click with your essay? Yeah, it might be. And certainly when I accompanied Meredith from the channel Living Lux with Meredith to her appointment in Paris, she definitely felt like because of what she was wearing, casual travel clothes, clean, respectable, smart, and because she didn't feel that she clicked with the sales associate, it was hard work. People buy luxury for all different reasons. We love the aesthetic, the color, the design, the fashion, the style, and the status. Some of us have never worked a day in our lives, whilst others grind every single day to build the life that they've envisioned for themselves. It's all funded by the same thing, money. Yet mine could be different to yours and hers and his and theirs. I bought a Birkin because I could. Because never in a million years did I think it was worth playing the game. I didn't think it was pretty enough or functional enough to go through that heartache. I'd never ever be motivated enough to spend the time and the money on the bracelets and the blankets and the pillows and the ashtrays that are used as jewelry trinket trays and the sushi sets and the teapots and the teacups and the coffee cups that sit there like trophies in a trophy cabinet, hopefully waiting to justify the exquisite, elusive quota bag, only to then be sold off to consignment stores on Facebook groups and Vestia Collective so that we can start all over again. So many people make that choice. They commit themselves. They have a goal, they know the system, they lean in, they play the game to get what they want. Sometimes it's a bag close to, but not exactly your specifications. Like Lisa mentioned about her Kelly from Luxury and Life in the Middle. Sometimes you get your dream bag, like Isabel Styles did in Sydney soon after she did her special order in Paris. And you gotta pay for that too. And some people don't without explanation. And that's not fair. Mel from Purse on Fleek's famous video, Hermes Made Me Cry, demonstrated that point. There are not too many people that are brave enough to admit that Hermes made them cry too by making them feel less than. What about Jocelyn from The Real Shaquin, who went to Paris and spent nearly every day she was there in Hermes, asking for an appointment, requesting appointments, purchasing little bits and pieces here and there in the hope that she would get an appointment. Her husband even participated in the game. Finally, they scored an appointment, no bags left. She left Paris empty-handed for a special occasion. She was pretty frank about how that process worked and wanted to share the fact that not everybody that goes to Paris can pick up a Birkin. Then you have me who accompanied my good friend on a VIP appointment and was offered a Birkin that I didn't even ask for. Go figure. Deb from Wild Unfiltered, Vivian Connolly and Cassie Thorpe all filled out a wish list at Hermes in the UK and just waited without doing a lot of pre-spending and got their dream pieces. Just update it every two years, sit back and wait. I know that process has changed now, but what I'm trying to do is demonstrate the inconsistencies across the globe in terms of how these bags 
are acquired. So now two people in California spend $250 to lodge a writ to challenge the practice of the tied selling of items in order to get an Hermes quota bag. The relevant act is the Sherman Act and it's all about antitrust. It's an illegal practice in California, but there could be federal implications. I'm not a lawyer, but I have listened to a lot of videos and I've read a lot of comments from you educating us content creators on what this could actually mean in terms of ramifications more broadly. It'll be interesting to see who joins the class action, what impact it has on Hermes. Will it just make it more elusive and secretive and toxic and we'll try harder and we'll spend even more to prove our loyalty that we're not one of the complainers? And what of the other brands or companies who have similar practices that sell watches and cars? What impact will it have on them and their customers? Is it a privilege to be able to spend your money where you choose and on what? Then there are those of us who already own these precious coveted pieces. We're shutting it down. We're saying it's rubbish. We don't want to lose the value in our collection. This is my retirement investment. Is that why we bought them? That's not very luxurious. At least, that's not what most of us say. However, that's exactly why I decided to buy mine. Because at the time I thought, I got offered a Birkin in Paris for recommended retail price and I can get a VAT refund in a colour and hardware that I love for a bag I never ever thought that I would have an opportunity to own or wanted to own but I had a chance to and I could so I did with the view that if it didn't work out for me I could sell it so I better get on to selling that right because if these guys get this case up <laughs> my bag's not going to be worth shit I think good luck to them. This is how most countries were born and most common law is established. A couple of brave or crazy people who are willing to challenge the status quo and make things better. Don't get me wrong, I think Hermes has been a real player and I respect how they've built their brand. I like a bit of arrogance in people because arrogant people, they know who they are and they don't hide it. I guess the challenge with Hermes is they hide a lot. There's not a lot of transparency there. And these legal proceedings might just bring about a little bit more. Obviously, if the case gets up, will there be Birkins for everyone? I don't think so. They'll still be hard to get. They'll still be elusive. There'll still be a process and qualifiers for how you can obtain such bags. There'll still be scarcity. Will it be more fair? I don't think so. The people who have the real wealth will still be in the most advantageous position to play the game according to whatever rules are established, however transparent or not they may be, in order to obtain the coveted quota bags. But will we have had a good, solid discussion about what's right and fair and just? That counts for something, doesn't it?